think it's still starting. All right. Welcome. This is our discussion panel on cyberbullying. Um, this is my sixth grade mm -hmm. class at Merrill Middle School in Oshkosh. All week, we have been studying uh, bullying. We started out with a lot of different resources. If you remember, our first resource dealt with the issue an article about Oshkosh in Oshkosh North. And they told us that 50% of high school students were the bullied or were doing the bullying. And we analyzed that. We questioned that number. And I'm getting some feedback from somebody. And I'm not sure where that's coming from. Um, there we go. And we moved on to other articles um, covering topics from all around the country. We have topics on parents and their reaction to bullying, things that they have done. We have an article where um, researchers have done research on the effects of bullying programs. And we had surprising results with that. I'm hoping some of you will bring that up. And then we also watched a couple videos that put people in a what would you do situation. And we kind of saw the reaction of the bystanders, the uh, silent acceptance and bystanders watching bullying happen and not doing anything about it. So hopefully that will come up in our discussion. You'll also see a little bit of every one of those in this video I'm about to show you. We have currently been covering a story in Florida where a girl committed suicide because of cyberbullying and probably other verbal bullying. And that case is still going on, and we were surprised to find out that two girls, ages 12 and 14, were actually arrested for this um, event. And others are being investigated. And that kind of took us by surprise. So I'm hoping that will come up in our discussion. We can talk about you know, the consequences of being involved in something like this. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is I want to put up on the screen our back channel discussion. If you have the opportunity to put a second tab up on your screen, you can join our back channel discussion and put this up, up in the URL bar with this code. Um, you'll see all of my kids on there already. Um, they're getting ready to put their thinking down on this back channel. You'll also see a lot of the thinking that was put on prior to this class um, from last hour. So while you're waiting, you can take a look and see what they put down. Um, I think they had some good ideas. And we were, our discussion was really starting to take off at the end. So hopefully you kids will have the courage to participate because I think you could give some challenging thinking to our panel of uh, experts. So with that, I'm going to take this off, and I want to introduce our panel of experts. Um, our first one we have with us is Mr. Oler. He is a reading teacher in the Oshkosh Area School District, and he's going to be one of our experts today. And I have another panel that you're going to see part of their heads. There they are. Um, this is um, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Stefani, and she is in the room with a couple of other teachers watching this program as well. And hopefully you get a chance to participate. Hello. There she is. And then and it's kind of neat because we're dealing with cyberbullying. We have a computer expert, Mr. Lass, one of our district um, people who work on our computers and knows a lot about our wireless system. And remember, if you remember, we have a couple articles that we talked about, one that's current on our desk right now, about districts actually monitoring wireless for bullying behavior. So maybe that discussion will come up as well, especially with this video that you're about to see. So with that, um, what I'm going to do, this is our classroom now. I need to click back into our video. And I'm going to put the video up on the screen here. You can see my classroom right now. And I'm going to put the video on the screen here. Um, my panel, I don't know if you're going to need earphones, might help. Um, or you might have to adjust your volume. But I think this worked pretty well last hour. So we'll see how this goes. Um, there may be sound issues, just to warn you. But uh, we're going to let her go. So here's the video. And all of you want to be watching and listening very closely. This will not be a time to, to uh, do your typing. Probably want to use your pencil and paper on this one. All righty? You'll be all right, Madison. A new virus, a any virus, can infiltrate schools through social media. A pandemic quickly spreading around the world. Its origins begin to be known 
covered with beautiful tools in the history of negative environmental environments are often most susceptible to contraction. This girl has been infected. She is now host to the virus and risks spreading it to anyone. Every post a host makes, and every text she sends, exposes the virus to multiple people instantly. It is highly contagious, and no one is immune. But some individuals may suffer more greatly from the side effects. Virus is chosen as a victim. Carriers of the virus can be the least respected of people and may even be unaware of their own infection. No one. Not even this girl's parents and teachers are aware that she is carrying such a deadly disease. Strains of this illness can be transmitted by phone, email, and social media. Through wireless and satellite transmission, it can reach you at home, school, or anywhere. The effects of the virus can take hours or days before getting out of control and causing serious damage to the skin. The virus feeds on those who are vulnerable to seeing the virus in space. Anger. Envy. Insecurity. And peer pressure. The effects would prove severe and could cause emotional scarring, creating long term symptoms of depression and some cases, suicide. But there is a way to fight against it. Like the virus, you can face that too. In support of Pink Shirt Day, join the battle against bullying. Write in pink to prevent further outbreaks of this pandemic. Protect yourself and report cases of the cyberbullying virus. So, um, pretty powerful video. And like I said, I know there's a lot of reading, but I think if you just, if you really got through the first few words, you got the idea. So many of you are so familiar with those types of posts and that type of communication, I think you got the idea of what the message certainly was. Did you understand that the host, the person that was spreading the disease, was the one that was posting the first message? And like a disease, it got passed on. Okay? And the victim was unaware of how big it was building, and you saw what happened. You also had a chance to see what the suggestion was for fighting the cyber virus at the very end, the last couple of posts. The statistics they showed up there I don't think were new to us. We've covered a lot of those things this week about girls more likely being bullied 
or being the victims of bullies, then dies. Okay? So this is what I like to do. Um, I know some of you are typing in your um, thinking right now on the back channel, and that's great. Some of you are writing in your notebook. Perfect timing. You're starting to figure out when's the time to put your thinking down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our back to our panel, and we're going to ask them about their reaction to the uh, video. And hopefully our speaker systems will work out right here. So um, who would like to start? Um, let's go with uh, Mr. Oler. All right. Is this the first time you've seen this video? Uh, this video, yes. Okay. So I know it went fast, but I was wondering what your reaction was to this video. Well, I uh, have some experience with some of it already. Um, I know that it happens more often than it should. Um, uh, some of the experiences that I've been, I, I like to play uh, online games, which I think could be a form of this uh, online um, activities. Um, and I'm constantly surprised by the type of... Uh, behaviors and um, attitudes that are expressed on even just gaming formats, whether it be Xbox or PlayStation. Um, I do have uh, uh, a brother and sister-in-law who are in high school and see on their Facebook posts um, stuff very similar to this as well. So um, it's out there, it's uh, unfortunate, and it is extremely hurtful to those people that are uh, receiving it. Okay, does anybody have a reaction for Mr. Oler? Yes. Okay, think about what you want to say. Okay, Mr. Roller, I'm just going to paraphrase what he said, is that he's familiar with the things that kids can put on uh, posts like Facebook, all right, and how it can affect a lot of people. So, Madison, do you have something to add? Um, Mrs. Stefani, is there any thoughts in your classroom about the video? What do we think about the bullying that's occurring online. I think sometimes it is, is more frequently occurring, um, which is an unfortunate thing that we've noticed. Um, additionally, sometimes I think people think it's okay if they write it and they're not saying it to that person's face and maybe they think the other person won't know or maybe they're, you know, they feel like, yeah, running is less wanting. Yeah. I, I, I agree. I think writing it sometimes is maybe just just easier for students to think that it's okay without a, a impact or consequence right away. They just think that they can write it and it's out there, but people still, I mean, they can read it and they still have the same reactions and the same feelings as if you would say it to their face. And I think they're just that disconnect where people have it um, and post it online and think that it's, you know, not as big of a deal. Mm -hmm. And it really is. What about in our discussion? What about in our discussion that we come up with to talk about the cyberbullying? We certainly covered that article. We're still covering. I mean, the article about the girl in Florida. And a lot of you had some, not criticisms, but some critical comments, um, not just about the bullies, but also about the victim. Does anybody, if anybody, could share those those ideas? I know we have some things written down. About, yeah, of course. But remember, Taylor, we talked about that video, and a lot of you in your discussion really focused on that article, just probably because it was current, and you could relate to it. But uh, what I heard from your conversations was that we're not, uh, not only critical about the movies, but we also have some critical things about the I'm curious if any of you want to share with our panel some of those thoughts. Okay, Eli. Searching up like um, uh, over the counter drugs and things like that, and how to put down a razor. You're wondering why make it worse for yourself by pinning your own death in your face. I mean, the bullies are doing bad stuff, you know, and they like me working, but why add on to it by? So, we're kind of, I'm going to paraphrase. I don't know if you could hear. Um, Eli's comments, but he's wondering why someone would take it to that level. How tough it must be, or what must be going on to take it to that level. And um, 
wondering if anybody has any comments about that. I only got uh, part of the view cut out on me. Okay. Um, our, our comment was about how could, how could someone take it to that level? What things must be happening where someone actually believes the comments that are being said about them? Mm -hmm. Okay. Madison? You got to speak up, Madison, please. So what you're saying, Madison, is that there's probably more issues than just the cyberbullying going on. Okay. So could it be as a result of cyberbullying or um, the fact that she took it this far might be more than just what was happening online. Taylor. Didn't want to maybe those comments took her over the edge. She maybe she didn't want to, but because of the comments, she started giving to them. Does that seem realistic? Jaquan. Um, well, what I'm thinking, um, why was why, why was this elected because of the Okay, Jaquan was saying that he wouldn't uh, put up with it. He would say something. And something that came up last hour, and I'm curious if this works for cyberbullying, is we have in our, our school um, something that we're teaching, and it's called stop, then what? Walk, and then talk. And it's not just verbal, it's also visual, where you stop, you use the hand signal. And I'm going to put this up here. So it's stop, using the hand signal, sign language for stop, and walk, if that doesn't work, and then talk to somebody. And would that work in a cyberbullying case? What makes that either something that still works or something that's probably an issue? Okay, Madison? Um, I have a comment. Yes. Um, in, in regarding the, the stop, walk, talk on cyberbullying, I feel like it would be harder to have that happen online because you could tell somebody to stop, but the walking is kind of hard unless you power down your device. And we talked about that a little bit about having the power to turn it off. Mm -hmm. And what makes that so hard though. You know, why is it so hard to turn the device off? Taylor. Your curiosity to see what else or what what the other people are responding to. Other people like those mean comments and what they're gonna say next. So when you say like them that people are responding like on a Facebook post? Yes. And you like see those numbers build up. It's almost as bad as somebody retypes something else. Yeah. Okay. We talked about that a little bit yesterday. That came out. Anna. Um, but this, this what Stefani said before, when uh, kids like say mean stuff online, they can hear technology, they feel more confident like, on the technology. Yep. Yep. So what Anna said um, is how much kids have the confidence to say these things online. That there's no, you know, face-to-face -face contact, so they they're brave, and once they put it out there, it's like it's gone. Also, something that came up in our discussion yesterday, I think it was yesterday, we talked about how the people reply or like, like Taylor said, like these things, they don't even know who the victim is. But it's so easy to do that without thinking about the consequences. And you saw in the video, I don't know if you saw, you saw the messages. Did you see the number of likes on the bottom? And I think on some of them, that number was going up. So people were liking that, and this girl was reading that, and she doesn't know who those people are. So they don't know who she is, but they're liking it. And I'm curious if that happened in that one in Chicago. 
What I'd like to do, um, we have another article that we covered this week, and we have a new one on the counter right now, talking about surveying this stuff, um, keeping um, eyes on what kids do online. Now, there's two ways that I want to present this to our panel, and I'm going to start with uh, Mr. Last, since he's our technology guy, is can school districts monitor social activity, and should they? Okay, so I'm going to put this one to Dave. I know some of you have your hands up, so I'm going to make you wait a second. And Mr. Last. Yep, Thank, thanks, Mr. Cole. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, school districts and businesses can monitor what happens not only in social media, but uh, on the computers in general. Uh, that doesn't stop you from going home and doing things like that, but I think we need to know that you put something out on the internet, whether it's being surveyed directly by a school district or by a business, it's on the internet, it is there forever. Uh, there's a lot of programs like Snapchat or something out there that will tell you that it's deleted after you know 30 seconds, but that isn't true. It is on a server, it's on the internet somewhere, and you can always trace those things back to who said what. So do you think the, um, the police in Florida right now are going through those things at this girls' schools? Could they do that? And at, probably at home, I'm assuming. Absolutely, yeah. Um, a lot of these free services that were offered as consumers or as customers, um, if, if police departments or government have uh, like search warrants or they have the authority to come in and and uh, go to a Facebook or go to a Google or go to a Snapchat and say, here's my warrant, I need to look for these per people's records, yes, they would absolutely have to um, comply with that. So they can go right to Google or right to Yahoo and get those records if they need to. Mm -hmm. Wow, yes. did you guys know that? So if you think about the activity. Now, one of the articles we have on our table right now, and I'll give you a question, is communities are looking at doing this, and governments in different countries around the world, but it was certainly discussed um, with the United States panel of experts, should this be something that our governments consider? And one of the comments they made in there, which I don't understand, and, and maybe we won't understand, is that they said the more we talk about it and get people out, out, um, in an uproar about losing, losing our rights, the more they say we're opening the door to this possibly happening which is a pretty complex thing to think about, but what about our government watching? I'm going to put this one on the kids, Dave, before you answer. I'm curious what they think, because we did talk about this a little bit. Does anybody want to respond to that? Should our government, let's say the city of Oshkosh, can put out and monitor for some way or whatever your social activity or anybody's, not just for bullying now. We're kind of moving it outside that, but let's keep it on the same topic. What do you think? What do you think, Eli? Um, well, I think the surveillance would be helpful, but it could also be invading somebody's like personal stuff that they weren't even doing on the streets. Um, it's what the Okay, Dave, I can tell one of the things we're going to have to do is figure out how to get these kids to talk on a mic, huh? <laughs> um, I, what he, what he said I, I could hear him good. fairly well. Good, I'm glad. So you heard him, he, he, I'm just going to paraphrase again, um, talked about that it would probably be helpful in some places, but your infringement on your rights is going to be an issue. And one of the things that came up in the discussion yesterday, and usually I prompt this, but it came up on their own, was if you have something to hide, you're probably going to be against this. But if you don't have anything to hide, what's the big deal? If you're following the rules, especially in school, what's the big deal? And are you then giving up your rights for safety? I'm gonna, I have a couple of hands in the air. We're going to hit them, and then we'll get your response, OK? So um, um, Max. You don't have anything to hide. Yeah, speak up, Max. What I hear Max saying is that everyone has a, a certain level of privacy that they deserve. 
Okay. Um, Erica, nice and loud, Erica. I know you're loud. It's not stoppable. Like, it's the takeaway. They put it on a stuff that you put on the video. Okay, so what I hear Erica saying is that um, she's talking about then what's going to stop them. Say you we stop their Facebook and we monitor their Facebook, you're kind of reverting back to the old school of bullying is just going to still be there. Like if bullying was always there when our parents were growing up and when. Right, she still thinks there's going to be a bullying problem. Interesting comment. And we'll go to one more, Jaquan. Um, let's say it's not Interesting perspective. Jaquan, um, this is the second time he's kind of done that mention about you have the power to turn away. You have the power to block them if it's Facebook, unfriend them. Um, I know there's some other things that come on because they can still talk about you behind your back, um, which kind of goes by Erica. They're still going to do it. Um, so let's go to Dave. What, what do you think about, I'm sure you've got to cover um, the ethical issue of how much can you observe from kids? How much, how much rights do we have to, for privacy? Um, yeah, that that's such a tough one. Um, you know, it goes so much uh, so much beyond cyberbullying because when you open it up for that, you open it up for everything. Um, that, like I said, that's a tough one to take a stance on. Um, I personally don't even know where I feel fall on that one um, because I do believe that you know having being able to survey sur have surveillance over us as consumers or as citizens will ultimately help us but it does definitely infringe on our rights that we have today. Okay, now I know there's a lot of things that we could cover yet. What I need you to do is I want to have the panel and all of you that have devices, I need you to summarize your thinking now. I'm curious, we're going to go right down the line. Mr. Roller, we're going to start with you. Mm -hmm. um, any final thoughts about this topic and um, for our kids today about cyberbullying and what you saw and what you heard today? Well, I think this is a problem that's been around for a long time and probably will continue to be around. Um, by educating ourselves on how to deal with the problem and how to stand up for ourselves, I think, is the key. Um, I know that, uh, to play off your last question, there are school districts that are actually looking at being able to monitor Facebook's uh, accounts and stuff of their students to be able to help with students that uh, might be having some issues or are struggling. Uh, but um, overall, I think... Uh, the, the biggest thing that we need to do is educate kids and, and let them know that they don't have to be part of the cyberbullying, they don't have to be um, bullied by another, and uh, to really stand up for themselves or to stand up for somebody else that's being bullied as well, even though it is tough. All right. Thank you, Mr. Roller. I, I, we talked about communication a lot the last hour. Mrs. Stefani, any final thoughts about what you heard or what you learned today in our discussion? Just don't do it. It's something that should, just shouldn't be done. Um, if you see it happening, obviously you need to stop it. And it, it, like Ms. Rolla says, stand up for yourself, but also stand up for others. You know, if you see something that's unkind, you know, alert somebody to it so it can be either removed or taken off, and just know that it's archived for people to see later if if it would get to that point. Okay. Um, last hour we talked about the power of the minor or the majority. And we we used that number like 80, 70, or I'm sorry, 80, 70. 80, 20, 80 percent people don't fully, 20 percent do. I'd like to think it's less than that. How do we empower that 80 percent? And finally, Dave, uh, Mr. Last, I keep telling you Dave, I'm sorry. Mr. Last, any final thoughts? I definitely echo what Ms. Stefani and uh, Mr. Oler say, um, but from the technical side, you know, just keep in mind that that once you put something out on the internet, it is there forever and it is accessible. Now, uh, like I mentioned earlier, that Google and Facebook and those companies they do have some protections, but if the police departments or whoever it is have warrant to come in and search that, they can. 
Uh, the other thing too is when you're when you know if you're going to put something online before you hit that enter key or you hit the send or the submit, just read it over. Think about it. What if somebody said that about you? How would you feel about it? So, um, you know, again, do your best to, to not try and uh, send those hurtful messages. Okay. Well, we're going to summarize. We're going to finish here. I know a couple of you have hands up. We're running out of time, and I don't want the lunch bell to ring. But I want to thank our panel. If, if we could thank our panel with uh, all the information they gave us and for joining us today for this kind of uh, experiment. Really appreciate it. We couldn't have done it without you. Um, if you have questions about this later on, don't you know? Feel free to talk to me about it. Um, I want to thank you guys for your participation as well. Um, I thought you did a nice job. I can't wait to read the back channel. If you get a chance, I'd like you to thank um, Bristol's mom for joining us. Um, hopefully, she got a chance to watch the video as well as participate in the back channel. So um, feel free to do that. Make sure you summarize your thinking. And with that, I'm going to end this broadcast. So thank you, all you, all my guests. Thanks for the invite. Thank you.